What's going on, G1's Tom the Airman out here at MAGFest 2017, end of day one. As you can see and hear, my voice is already taking a hit, but you know what, it's okay. We're out here at the Grand Gaylord National Hotel and Resort, and it's absolutely fantastic. So today was full of absolute craziness. I got a whole bunch of notes here. We're going to go through all of them right here because, oh, you, you can probably... It's, it's still going on out here. This, this, this is a 24 hour event. It does not shut down. This is largely where SGC got its inspiration of being a non-stop event. So anyways. So uh, first thing of note, I forgot my jammies, my jam jams and my Claritin. So that's always been great. You know, I've got a severe dust allergy, but you know, I seem to be holding on there. I started allergy shots earlier in uh, late 2016. So it seems to be working out for me, but I, <laughs> I got no jam jams, so that's just awkward. So with all the stuff that I did remember to bring, I forgot to bring that kind of stuff. So going to bed, well, gotta yeah, you gotta you gotta dance with the girl you brought. So anyways, let's see here. Okay, the first panel of the day was a requiem for Konami. The uh, this guy uh, went ahead and chronicled everything that was absolutely incredible about Konami and every single mistake they've made that has led them to the terrible company that we all know today, including the clips from the uh, Video Game Awards where Jeff Keighley threw them under the bus, saying that was not the politically correct thing to do, but it was the right thing to do. It, it, was, it was all right, but it really was like a really sobering reminder to show us all of these great games and experiences that they've produced over the years. Then they dumped them all on Hideo Kojima, very late in their life and then all of a sudden this guy that did very well with the mobile game got named chairman and then everything went to hell in a handbasket after that you know it was it was a spectacular train wreck that panel video is going to be something else when i get it up on youtube uh after that was uh dj cutman's panel uh with game shops and everything uh cutman uh going ahead and talking about everything that he's gone and funneled into working on his um uh, everything that he's taken for all the uh, proceeds that he's made with the Patreon and any money done from the chiptunes that he's done himself and putting that into game shops and everything that he's ever done, talking about how his time that he worked in a, uh, a, a record-producing studio up in New York and and how he was helping aspiring rap artists produce albums and everything. And, and it was very interesting to hear about that, about all the stuff that he put together, only one album ever made it out. And he said, this is stupid. This is not the way the music industry should be. And this is why he's trying to change everything that he's doing with game chops. You know, it's it's just showing how broken the system is and how he how he wants to change that. That was really cool. Heard a lot of cool music that's going to be playing at the DJ battle. Uh, Grindcraft was there sitting in the front row and he was just like absolutely giddy. So that that's going to be hell awesome. We're going to check in on that. Um, let's see here. What else did we have? Anything else on there? Oh, oh gosh, the, the probably the highlight of it all was talking about how like he got a chance to work with Vert, Jake Kaufman, and it's like he says the way that he processes information in terms of music is completely unlike anybody else he's ever done. Talking about like saying, why is the bass so heavy here? And then he just gets a wall of text back from Vert about like, this is the way it is and like a systematic like, scientific breakdown of everything of why it is the way it is it's, it's completely fascinating that's going to be a cool ass panel video to see um so that was that was great uh, also he says he wants to do a special edition album but not on vinyl he wants to release it on cassette I, I i i don't get it but he says allegedly and i and i and i trust chris on this he says it because chip tones sound good digitized onto tape i guess we'll know it when it happens you know maybe it'll be like guardians of the galaxy and i'll just get like a special tape deck just for for his music that i, I would do that that would be cool i would prefer it to be on vinyl but you know he says he's not doing he's not doing it so anyways i got my camel back on here hold on trying to preserve my voice you know i've done a pretty good job of keeping my mid-range is good it's the low range that's completely gone i don't know if you can hear me over all of this i mean like you can still hear everything 
You know, it's still going. Um, they got like one of the two jam rooms like directly beneath us. So there we go. Um, immediately following Cutman. What was it? Oh, Ellen McLean, the grandma of MAGFest. Ellen is an absolute gem. Um, she was on stage and it was introduced by her, uh, her husband, John Patrick Lowry. Um, and he had a really, <laughs> he had a wonderful way of introducing her. And, and instead of getting like right to video game voice acting talk, Ellen took a moment to talk about how her and John Patrick were partaking of the sights and sounds of Washington, D.C. And it really made me realize that I've been living in Northern Virginia for almost my entire life, and I really don't get out that often to actually take a look at the stuff that downtown Washington, D.C. has to offer. And she was going on and on about how they spent an afternoon at the uh, African American Hi uh, History Museum and was just going through the detailing of like all of the struggles and, and leading all the way up to the civil rights movement and stuff. And it was very powerful stuff, stuff that, you know, you would not expect. You would expect like, oh, you're going to go see GLaDOS and she's going to talk funny about how it is to work for Valve. No, she was she was dropping some some uh, real hard truths and saying that, you know, be appreciative of the city that you have around you and go and check out the museums. And she said, and that's my plug for the Smithsonian. I'm like, well, that was a necessary one because there was a lot of people that probably didn't even know that museum existed. So that was cool that she talked about that. Um, then she <laughs> asked John Patrick to join her on stage. The subject went completely off the rails. She told this hysterical story about how she was on a invited to a party that started on a Friday and she left on a Monday. And she said that's when she decided to quit drinking and smoking and, and marijuana and all that fun stuff because her teacher said that your voice is your meal ticket and if you fuck it up, that's it. You know, um, those were her words, not mine. Um, that was that was really something. Um, it, it, I'm not doing the story justice, but like when you see Ellen McLean, you don't think recreational drugs, <laughs> but there were some in that story, and it quickly uh, turned into John Patrick being a very ham interviewer, saying, "What's it like to be Ellen McLean? Who's your inspiration?" Yada yada yada. Uh, that was really funny. And then they got into talking about, and this is, and, and, I, and I didn't know about this. This is actually really cool. Cause like when you go to see John Patrick and Ellen's panels, um, they're best known for being Gladys, the sniper respectively, and some characters that they've done in Dota 2. And I wasn't sure if we were going to get any new stories out of them outside of them and talking about their times of being freelance musicians and traveling Europe together shortly after they got married, but they clued us in on a new game, and the name escapes me, I'll have to look it up, uh, I'll, I'll post a name of it right here, um, but it was about this game that they are voicing a husband and wife team in about these people that are disappearing around this compound and it may or may not be occult related and the invest it, it's like a it's almost like silent hill but based on what they're describing it's like a, a survival horror game almost or or a point and click adventure game or something like amnesia or something like that it's um uh the it seems relatively normal and stable and then you see like cages and and vices and torture racks and all this really weird stuff and it sounded really really cool and the fact that they're both voicing in it together and they said they actually had direct involvement with the game developers on the shaping of the game and the characters it's now on my radar i don't know what platform it's coming out on hopefully it's coming to the platforms of my preference but you know it we'll, we'll see what happens if they're involved i definitely want to be a part of it um and they closed out their panel by actually singing the songs of the game that would it was one of the songs from one of the possible endings so that means there's multiple endings with multiple songs to go along with it, which is really cool and I like that kind of stuff. And to really close out the panel, finally, they went ahead and went directly from 
that song from their new game to Still Alive from Portal. And I don't care how many times I hear that song. When I hear them sing it live, the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end and I get goosebumps. They're just adorable together. Like I said, they're the grandma and grandpa of MAGFest and it's always wonderful to have them. So that was absolutely fantastic. So after that, we went ahead and we went to lunch. No, it was more like an early dinner at the Cadillac Bar and Grill directly across the street from the hotel. It's a themed restaurant with a mechanical bull riding thing. And it was kind of like a mini G1 uh, uh, meetup dinner. Everybody was there. Epic Game Music, Hyper Combo 64, uh, Kanan, Shelby, um, uh, 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 Bryce, uh, G1 Caboose, Pizap. Um, a ferret, uh, a whole a whole bunch of people were there, and then, <laughs> in grand fashion, Dylan Toomey himself showed up, and that's when it all went crazy. Then uh, Dancing Panda showed. Oh, that's right, Helen Garo, my desert showed up. Uh, she was there too. Whole bunch of uh, G ones from SGC made it out there, and that was that was really cool. And I ordered uh, pork chops, and they were like huge, like pork chops from like goddamn castlevania wall meat it was crazy um that that was nuts it was it was good food good company and good times and um uh, what and that we went decided to go back inside and then we went to magfest origins which was a bunch of alumni who used to handle the convention running of magfest including brendan becker and the guys dating back to magfest one Way back in the early 2000s, they were all there recapping all the crazy stories that had gone on in the formation of it, where it used to be the Mid-Atlantic Gaming Festival, and then slowly became the Music and Game Festival that we all know and love today. And talking about how it's gone through many shapes, many iterations, what it takes to actually put on an event of this size, and more importantly, securing the... Colossus Roar. Yeah. You can still hear them. It's fantastic. So um, there's all of that going on. Um, talking about how to secure the hotel room and keep the rates low. And they gave all those little trade secrets out on how to do that. That was really insightful because I don't ever want to take gum coming to an event like this for granted. But it's... There's so much that goes into it, other than just planning the event, but securing the venues and all the other talent that goes along with it. It's, it, I love hearing these things, like the minutia of how to put all this stuff together. And immediately across from that was the video game museum where the Nintendo PlayStation would be on display. Of course, it wasn't there, but I was much surprised to see, and the sea of Sony production video monitors that were there was a Turbo Graphics, uh, a Turbo Duo rather, running Henshin Engine, which is a game I backed on Kickstarter, because you know the Turbo Graphics uh, CD homebrew scene isn't exactly hopping. So the fact there was actually somebody there making a game on Kickstarter and then they actually had it playable there. It was very, very cool. I, apparently it's based on a web comic. I don't know anything about that. But, you know, it was it was a game that I felt that was worth backing because the releases for games within that uh, that system just don't come along very often. And I wanted to support it in whatever I could. So that was cool to play that. And now we're back up here. So this is this is where we're at, man. The end of day one. And I'm feeling fantastic. And I'm sure after a, a good night's sleep, you know, I will feel my, my voice will feel that much better. So. Anyways, that will do it for now. This has been a maglog number two for day one, and we'll catch up with you tomorrow after all the shenanigans to go with on that. So until then, this is G1, Tom the Iron Man, signing off at MAGFest 2017.